Castles are impressive, foreboding and grand structures, usually constructed from dark, grey masonry. Yet Stirling Castle, one of the most historically significant castles in Scotland, is home to a strikingly vivid Golden Hall. Stirling Castle's Great Hall hints at a much more colourful past than you might assume, and raises complex questions surrounding the restoration of historical buildings. Do you restore them to their original glory, or to what we expect them to look like? There's been a castle on the imaginatively named Castle Hill since at least the 12th century, but the current fortification was primarily constructed in the 15th and 16th century. Its lofty position above the city of Stirling, surrounded on three sides by steep cliffs, provides a commanding view of the surrounding land, and more importantly, presents a formidable task to any army attempting to breach the castle's defences. The castle's proximity to the River Forth afforded the castle great strategic worth, as until the construction of the Forth Bridge was completed in the 1890s, Stirling was the farthest downstream crossing point. The castle wasn't just a military fortification, it was also a palatial home to some of the most famous royalty from Scottish history. James VI called the castle home, as did Mary Queen of Scots. As such, the castle was appointed in a manner fitting for its royal inhabitants, and more importantly, the guests that they would entertain. The need to cater for large and lavish social gatherings led to the construction of Stirling Castle's Great Hall. Completed in 1503, it is the largest of its kind in Scotland and held some astonishingly extravagant events. One such event, a banquet held to celebrate the baptism of the king's son, included a fish course, served from a model ship, complete with 40 foot high masts, and working cannons. But history was not kind to the Great Hall, and by the modern age, it had lost much of its grandeur. When Historic Scotland took over guardianship of the castle in 1991, the hall was a shadow of its former self. The harsh Scottish weather had stripped the exterior walls back to their dark grey stone core, and the centuries of military use had led to significant alterations. During the hall's military life, it had become a troop barracks, which entailed the removal of the hall's stunning hammer beam roof, and a whole host of other significant modifications. A dark grey outline was all that anyone had ever remembered, but as the experts from Historic Scotland began their restoration planning, they discovered that that was not always the case. During the early stages of the restoration, they uncovered sizeable fragments of the original plaster and lime wash, which had coated the exterior walls of the building. These fragments showed the hall's original rich golden colour, which would also have adorned a number of the castle's other buildings. And so, the decade-long restoration process began, rebuilding the magnificent roof, restoring the interior fittings, and coating the exterior walls with a golden yellow lime wash. When the restoration was complete and the scaffolding came down, the Great Hall was visible once more, but the vivid exterior was not universally appreciated. A not insignificant number of people derided the bright and cheerful remodelling, regarding the new look of the hall as silly and garish. Now, I like the colour, and I think that the historically accurate appearance of the hall is of deep importance, but no living person had seen the hall as anything other than a grey stone building. To some, that grey outline felt correct. It's all they had ever known. It's all any living person had ever known. This shines a light on the complex questions that arise when historical buildings are to be restored. At what point in history do you restore the building to? The hall, as it was originally designed, is what Historic Scotland had gone for, but that wasn't the only option. They could have restored to a later period, after the golden plaster had worn away, keeping the grey stone walls visible. This would have kept the hall consistent with the rest of the castle, and in keeping with the stereotypical appearance of a cold grey castle. 
People have always liked to have a bit of colour around them, and whilst when you picture a castle, you probably picture a foreboding grey stone fortress, in reality, this wasn't always the case. And Stirling Castle's great golden hall is a shining example of this unexpectedly colourful history. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to support my work and get a whole heap of extra content, you might consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find me at patreon.com forward slash the media ward. You might also like my podcast. You can find links to it down below or just search for the media ward podcast.